We're going to talk about one of the more subtle things that you can do to take your tooling from average to competition worthy. That's coming up. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Reese. This is Weaver Leather Supply. Today, we're going to be talking about one of the things that I got dinged for on my very first competition piece. In 2022, I was teaching at the International Show of Federation, International Federation of Leather Guilds show in Texas. And I had been encouraged to enter two of the pieces that I had on display. Dreams of Dragonfire, which is the dragon shield that you may have seen, and a piece called the Eagle. The shield ended up taking a blue ribbon and the Eagle, it didn't even place. Now keep in mind, neither one of these pieces were ever intended to be entered into a competition. They were just passion pieces, I guess you could call them. After the competition was over and the ribbons had been handed out, I asked for some feedback from the judges because I sincerely wanted to know what they saw that I didn't see so that I could improve. One of the very first things that they pointed out to me is the bevel shadow that goes around the eagle. It's fairly obvious. I knew it was there. I just didn't realize that it was as big of a deal as it actually is. So today we're going to be talking about one of the easiest ways that you can remove that shadow to elevate your tooling, especially if you're interested in competing. But first, we want to take a look and see exactly what it is that I'm talking about when I say a bevel shadow. This is a project that we did a while back and it gives us a fantastic look at a bevel shadow. Shadows inside the project are great. We want those. It's that shadow around the outside of the design that we want to avoid. If you look at the shadows right around the stems, that is a really good example of what I'm talking about. We beveled the area down on the outside of the stems, but we created that dark area, that dark line that runs down the each side of the stems. Now, just so that we're, you and I are on the same page, I'm not talking about things that are inside the design. So if we look at the petals and the flower, we want those shadows. That's what creates depth. It's the, the bevel shadow around the outside of the design that we want to avoid. So how do we get rid of it? Well, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our background tools and we're going to blend that shadow into the background. We can go dark and heavy or we can go light and subtle. Either way, we want to blend it and just kind of let it melt into the background. In fact, this clip right here will show you exactly what I'm talking about. You can see that I'm using a really light background texture, but that shadow is still disappearing. Now, one of the mistakes that I see people making is not taking that background texture all the way up to the edge of the design. And when we don't do that, what we have is one area that has texture, we have a bare spot, and then we have that bevel shadow. And that, that bare spot essentially creates a halo which highlights the thing that we want to get rid of. So as you're working that background into the, the, into the design to get rid of the shadow, make sure you take it all the way up to the edge of whatever it is that you're creating. If it's a leaf, Take that texture all the way up to the edge of the leaf. So the last tip that I would give you is to make sure that you're using the right size background tool. If you have a stamp that's too large for the area that you're working in, drop down a size or two. It's just going to make your job easier. So by intentionally blending that shadow into the background, we can elevate our tooling and get one step closer to taking that blue ribbon home. 
So that's going to do it for this video. I will see you in the next one. In the meantime, go make something amazing.